Neonic Horror Productions presents. Welcome. Welcome back. Watchers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hi, what's goes pop and I'm Devin with a feline in my arms who's just rubbing every everywhere. And I'm Jacob with a canine who's sitting on my bed licking herself. Yeah, our pets. <laughs> mm-hmm. Our mascots. So, our mascots. Our mascots. Our reasons to live. A little furry cat, not cat, a little furry dog that's a pamper princess and a three-legged cat that's a freaking diva. Slash pamper princess, too. Slash pamper princess. I try to pamper her. Anyway, so welcome back to Book Watchers, where we talk about books. And sometimes... If they have adaptations, we might talk about that sometimes. We're not we're we're not exclu- we're not doing just those anymore, if you haven't quite figured out by this point. Um granted most yes, of them yeah. we've talked about so far do kind of, but uh l- l- God, when would this episode be posted? Oh will it be so, will it be like uh after the Drift series once we're done? Yes. About it, or- Yes, okay. I'll probably post that after the dress. So last three weeks we talked about uh D and D uh series of books, which um was the first three the first set of them of this series. And then, yeah, the legend uh the legends of Drist. The first yes. three books, um Homeland, Exile, and Sawyer. Yeah. So today now, we're going back to Stephen King. Yay. Yay! We're going back to Stephen King. Today I thought I'd do one of his more popular books, um, or at least most one of his most recognizable books, uh, yeah. next to Carrie, and that is The Mist. Yes. Yeah, so, like, you know, of course, Stephen... Uh, so we all know Stephen King, his horror is a lot... His horror novels kind of take in a mix of, like different elements from creatures to slashers to psychological to mysticism occultism um in the mist case it's something like it's definitely creatures because there's gonna be a lot of creepy critters running around in this book and it's subsequent and also the movie and somewhat the tv show that was released last year I did not finish the TV the season for the TV show, so I don't know if it's actually good or what's going on with that. So, uh, if you, uh, well, did you finish it or? I finished it. Um, we'll get into that. Uh, okay. Personally, personally, this is one of the few. Uh, this is one of the few movies uh, that actually was very accurate to the that was very faithful to the book and accurate in terms of like the plot and the synopsis and like what goes on in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only difference between the, the only real difference between the bo- the movie and the book was that um, the movie actually has an ending. Oh, that ending. We will talk about it. Oh, Oh, that fucked me up. <laughs> yeah. It's so oh, fucks God. me up. That's, oh. a, that's the definition that is the definition of jumping to conclusions. Oh, and I think and I, I, I granted I have not read the book. The Miss is on my list of books to read. So obviously, um, Jacob here will be the one leading the conversation. But like, I've always wondered, I'm like, is the book ending like this, or the movie take its own little spin to its to an ending? So. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll we'll talk we'll about that. that. Yeah, we'll get to that. I don't want to like just jump the gun and spoil it for you. Just uh, so, yet. 
what year did the did the mist come out so the book itself was originally uh published back in 1980 you know let me pull up my book because like i also have other resources and like i'm mm-hmm. seeing multiple dates but i'm pretty sure those dates are those other dates are just like other publication dates so like um and of course my kindle edition of the mist does not have the publication dates on it fucking horror google uh, copyright yep so the story was previously published in scale in skeleton crew uh mm-hmm. in 1980 before uh it was published uh oh, it's all, it was, i'm assuming yeah so hold on, let me let me pull up my other resources so the mist itself um was first published by viking press in 1980 as part of the dark forces anthology um mm-hmm. an edit and then an edited version was subsequently uh included in Stephen King's 1985 collection Skeleton Crew. Um so just to get to the uh this book, at least my copy of the book, uh is about 166 pages long. Um and of course that's including all of like the extra shit that you know, like copyright publication and things like that. Yeah. Um so the miss the story of the mist itself takes place in a small town in uh yep you guessed it maine as a lot he of loves the, his maine yeah he loves like he a lot of you'll you'll find out very quickly that a lot of stephen king's novels take place somewhere in new england uh mainly uh maine um for start uh for starters this ta- this story takes place in the town of Bridgeton. Um uh, so pretty much what ha- so the story is, is centered around uh the protagonist and narrator David Drayton. Um David Dr- uh it follows him and his young son and a group of other people as they survive this uh this very odd phenomenon that appears in their small town. So uh, the morning after a a very severe thunderstorm, um, power goes out all over town, and out of nowhere, this unnaturally thick cloud of mist spreads over the town. Mm-hmm. And at first, it lo- at first, like the locals saw it, they thought it was just like a bunch of clouds uh, coming in, but it turns out no, it's really dense fog. Uh, really dense fog. And uh, no one really knows what, like, what's causing it. Um, some uh, locals believe it was uh, caused by something, some sort of experiment going on in a nearby military installation, which <laughs> they're not wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of speculation around the mist because uh, the nearby uh, military installation has been working on something, uh, a rumored project called the Arrowhead Project. Um, one theory holds that the previous night's storm uh, disrupted experiments in the facility that it was cr- uh, in the facility that was being conducted, and um, so far the installation and the communities closest to it have not been heard from since before the storm uh, started. Mm-hmm. So there's like indicator that, like, okay, something's going on here. Uh, so our protagonist, David Drayton, um, alongside his young son, Billy and neighbor, uh, Brent Norton, who's, uh, <clears throat> who was a bit of a dick. Just going to put that out there. Uh, they go to the local supermarket for groceries, um, and they leave David's wife behind at their home. Um, while they're at the supermarket, the mist itself envelops the entire town, completely blotting out the sun. And uh, as soon as it hit, as soon as the mist hits them, uh, covers the store, the store itself, they feel an earthquake-like jolt. Um, What I'm trying to remember is like what caught what I'm trying to remember in the book, like what caused them to like not go out into the mist. Mm. Because in the movie, uh, some guy, uh, one of the locals come running into the store as the mist like comes in 
and uh like uh like in the movie uh one of the locals run into the store freaking out like something's in the miss and convinces everyone to stay inside but i'm trying to remember what how it went in wasn't Oh yeah, Let's that's in the movie. And yeah, someone came in. Don't there's something on the miss, and then some tentacle thing came around and dragged them out. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, so that's what happened. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, for, so pretty much the same thing happened in in the book as in the movie. Uh, when the when the mist starts rolling in, um, a man uh comes running into the market. And uh, his face is covered in blood. His nose is bleeding, and uh, he's yelling. He uh, he's yelling out, "Something is in the fog!" And um, you know, he's yelling out, "Something in the fog!" Something took uh, this other guy. Uh, you know, he's freaking out, and he tells everyone, "Don't go out into the uh, don't go out into the mist. It's not safe." It's not safe at all. Um, so, uh, every pe- the people that were trapped in this in the convenience store, they begin to barricade the door and make sure nobody goes out, um, because clearly something is not right is not natural about the mist. Uh, yeah. So everyone decides to pr- uh, pretty much wait out the mist, see if it will uh, dissipate on its own, and um, you know. So while everyone's milling about. Uh, one of the uh, store employees, a uh, kid named uh, Norm, tries to go outside to fix a clogged vent in the store's generator because um, without it, they lose power in the store. Um, but as he's trying to clog it, he ends up opening one of the back, uh, one of the loading bay doors. And when he does that, this te- this massive tentacle comes snaking in and ends up dragging the poor boy out into the mist. And when it when he does when it does that a bunch of other tentacles come in and uh David along with the assistant manager Ollie Weeks uh having witnessed having witnessed Norm's death, they try to convince the remaining uh survivors of what's happening and really press them not to leave the store. Um There's a one. There's a, a group of people, including his uh, David's neighbor, the guy, the asshole I mentioned earlier, Brent Norton. Um, him and a, a small group of people. They don't believe David, and they instead decide to go outside and find help. But they don't even make it halfway across the parking lot before all of them are attacked and killed by a bunch of unnatural, predatory creatures. Uh, Having witnessed this, now everybody in the store is like, "Oh my! Like, okay, <laughs> we're gonna stay in the store now. <laughs> Nobody go yeah. out there. No, like, you want to live? I, I choose life. <laughs> so, um, the assistant manager Ollie, um, he's given a revolver by one of the other uh, one of the other uh, survivors, a um, girl named Amanda. She and uh, they're the the four of them, like David, his son Ollie, Amanda. They kind of form this little group where they're just like, uh, like yeah, let's like stick together because the their small group is probably the more rational thinking of the entire store. They yeah, like David's and Ollie saw these monsters, and everyone else saw what happened out in the parking lot. But they're the ones thinking, yeah, we need to like be smart about this. And try to stay calm and not cause a panic. Um, now, uh, I just want to point out, so... Uh, there is a... Uh, there is one individual, an elderly religious fanatic named Mrs. Carmody. Uh, she begins to incite panic in, the, uh, in everyone else by like preaching the gospel and saying that it's the end times and everything. And... You know, she is basically just trying to like. She's because she's because she's become uh, what is what is called a demagogue, which is basically a person who uses like 
uh, facts or information, um, whether it be it religious, political, or whatever, what have you, and they twist it in their own way to manipulate people. So she's basically like she she's trying to like she's basically like ter- like trying to set herself up as like some sort of religious leader. And it's working because people are the people in the store are terrified of what's going on outside. So they have, so they and they don't understand why it's happening. So who do they turn to? But the crazy religious lady who's preaching that that you know God will save them and it's the end times and shit. Um, while she's doing this, um, the store is attacked by these large insects, um, and. Uh, so like this, so what happens was like these insects began to crawl over the outside of the store, and mm-hmm. they began attracting these uh, pterosaur-like creatures, um, and those pterosaurs like began like feeding on the bugs. Uh, the thing about these bugs is that they kind of look like big uh, locust-like creatures. They have like um, they're insectoid, but they also have like a long prehensile tail, like a scorpion's tail. Yeah. And and this is where like Mrs. Ca- uh, Carmody begins to like really like push it. Yeah, it's the end time because um in the Bible uh when Arm- when the apocalypse happens um and God will unleash the demon of the abyss Abaddon and Abaddon will uh call forth uh call forth his army of these locust like demons. And these locusts, they are described as having, like, the face of a man, the hair of a woman. They're, they have crowns, the body of a, of a locust, the body and wings of a locust, and the stinger of a scorpion. Oh, Lord have mercy. Now, oh, I mean, those are... Crazy. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, that's batshit crazy. But anyway, uh, so... When these bugs start crawling all over the front of the windows, one of them manages to slip, uh, squirm inside through a broken window, and um, it killed, but uh, not before it stings somebody, and they die, unfortunately die very terribly. <laughs> oh, yeah. They get fucked up. Yeah. Uh, after this event, David tries to lead a group of people to the nearby pharmacy to try to, like, see about finding a way of escaping as well as try to retrieve medicine for uh one of the people who was injured in the attack uh uh who was injured in uh that attack um I, while they were at the pharmacy uh David and his companions uh encounter huge spider-like creatures that oh. um yeah, that due to the loss of power in the pharmacy, got in through the pharmacy's propped open doors and killed everyone inside. So the spiders and other creatures from the mist attack, and while the expedition makes it back to the market, they lose almost half their numbers. So, so this is also feeding into Mrs. Carmody's, uh, you know, rhetoric of the end times and shit. And more and more people are flocking to her. Um, you know. Uh, they begin to follow. They begin to follow Mrs. Carmody's uh, like preaching with like religious fervor and shit. And she even like convinces them to sacrifice one of the uh, one of the other people in the store uh, to the creatures outside as a way of like appeasing these creatures and like getting faith, like getting forgiveness from God. Um. So like uh while like before, so like while everything's happening there was a group of three individuals that mainly kept to themselves in the book um later these three were found in the back of the store they had uh gone into the, one of the storerooms and they hung themselves and uh Upon further investigation, they, uh, people realized that these guys worked at that military installation. And the problem is, is that because the uh, thing is, this leads everyone to believe that these guys were the ones responsible for the attack, like for everything that's happening. 
Now, in the now the thing about the book, uh, the thing about the book is that they don't really like Stephen King doesn't really address that very much. It's just more like oh, they kind of just come to that conclusion on their own. They don't really he doesn't they it doesn't really talk about. They don't really talk about what actually happened. Like, they don't get a chance to talk to them, but they can get an explanation. Uh, let's see here. I'm sorry, let me pull up my book real quick, because I want to see if they actually, if this also happened in the movie. Because, like, in the movie, the same thing happens. They do find the bodies of the of the soldiers, but one of them didn't kill himself. And he was the one that ends up getting sacrificed to the monsters because he tells everyone that they were experimenting with a way of opening a portal to another dimension. And it got out of hand. Excuse me. It got out of hand and portal was open to another dimension and all this crap just flooded into our world. Yeah, so in the book, there was only two of them, and they uh, took their own lives because they know what they did. And in the movie, there were three of them, but two hung themselves just like in the book. But the third one uh, chose life, but in the end was en ended up getting thrown out into the mist by Mrs. Carmody. And uh, Carmody, I'm sorry. And ended up getting... Uh, Ended up becoming dinner for one of the giant creatures outside. Uh, and then, of course, and this all happened before the pharmacy incident. So it was after the pharmacy incident that pretty much everything uh, descends into chaos. Mrs. Carmody's group, uh, Mrs. Carmody's uh, influence grows more powerful, and she. It's really trying to like get everyone to follow her, and those who don't, she wants to start like throwing them out into the mist as heretics. Um, but David and his group, uh, but David, alongside his son, um, the assistant manager Ollie, uh, Amanda, and a few other survivors, decide that they're going to try to escape to David's car. Um, But just as they're about to leave, Mrs. Carmody uh, stop, confronts them and calls in the crowd to offer young Billy and Amanda sacrifices. But Ollie, the assistant manager, who, uh, as I mentioned earlier, got a revolver from uh, Amanda, who, ha uh, who carries peace, ends up shooting Mrs. Carmody. Uh -huh. Yep, he ends up shooting her. And, you know, her final words to Davis group is, you'll all die out there. Um, so with their leader dead, now the so-called congregation dissolves into further confusion, and uh, David and his group make their way out to his car. Um, unfortunately, in route to the car, Ollie and one other survivor gets killed by the uh, creatures outside, and another one of the survivors uh, runs back to the store. Um, the rest of the group attempt, attempt to reach David, uh, manage to make it to the car, and they drive away, and um, first things first, David wants to run back, uh, run back to his home to see, to try to uh, rescue his wife, um, but the driveway itself is blocked by fallen trees, and um, they do manage to get back up to the house, but they find that his wife is dead. Unfortunately, she been she had unfortunately been killed by the creatures. Um, so Sorrows. this is like sorrows, sorrows, prayers. Yes. Um, so this is pretty much where the book begins to come to a conclusion. Now, the thing about the ending in the mist, the book, it is not a very satisfying ending because it is a very open ended ending. Um, mm. the group. Yep. So the group drive south through the devastated and misdrouded New England and they do wit and they do witness further signs of catastrophe and more creatures of unknown origin um, uh, so while they're driving they do stop for the night in like a safe space uh, safe place and uh, David manages to uh, 
he searches through broadband radio uh, frequencies, and through the mist's interference, he believes he hears someone say Hartford. And he believes that's a, possibly a, a safe place. And that's where the book ends. That's it. It's very open ended. It's like, uh, maybe, like, it kind of like, it, it feels like Stephen King may have intended to, like, write a sequel to this novel, but he never did, as he usually does. And if Stephen King were to write a sequel to this book, it's probably not going to be for another 30 years. That is if fair. He's... Yeah. Because if we look at uh, The Shining and then Doctor Sleep, you know, there's like, what, a good 20 to 30 year uh, time frame between the two books. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that is the end of of The Mist. Now, the conc- now the ending of the movie... Oof. Talk oh. about jump. Oh, God. Uh, so... Oh, God. The ending in the movie, pretty much everything happens um, the same in the movie for the most part. Uh, but the very end, they get stuck on some road where they get stuck, pulled over, whatever. And the guy pulls out, the main character pulls out the pulls out a gun. And it's, it's the grandparents are with him, right? Or is it just an old no, lady? It was... It was an older, so it was, um, hold on, let me look up, let me look it up real quick. It's been a minute since I've seen the movie, but Uh, there's like an old couple or an old woman, his son, and then him. Yeah, let's see. Amanda, Billy, Ollie. So, David, I'm sorry, David, Billy, guy named Dan, Amanda, and an older and an elderly woman named Irene. Yep. Uh, they they're the ones that make it to David's car and they leave. Um, they drive through. They pretty much do the same thing in the book. Um, drive like start driving south through New England. Um, there was a great visual where they see this massive six legged creature taking a stroll I think it's down. Called the, I think it's called the Behemoth. I think is the name they gave it. While in the um, yeah. either in the Script, proof of concept, something like that. But I do remember somewhere, it's either Stephen King or the production crew, somebody gave a name. I think it's like Behemoth. It's a non, the, the creature doesn't, it's not, it's nonviolent. Uh, supposedly it just walk. it just walks around while these other creatures live underneath there. Some shit. There's a whole like lore video shit out there that talks about all that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, this, like, so the ending in The Mist was so sad because, like, um, the car runs out of gas, and they pre- they pretty much realize, like, yeah, it's hopeless. There's, there's no way they're going to make it out of this. And so, David has a gun. And then, yep. And his son and, is like, oh, his wide eye, like, what? And then you see the last shot is like, one of the last shots is that he is outside, shows outside the car and he shoots his son and the three survive and the other three survivors. And then he goes to kill himself and there are no more bullets. Yep. He only had four bullets left and there were five of them. And then to make so. things even worse as the, as the gun did not fire, he hears hold a up, noise in the up. what? Hang on, I'm sorry, dude. What the fuck, Lucas? What? Can you... Are you still there? Yeah. What happened, motherfucker? Hang on. No, my brother called me and like, uh, I guess like my phone tried to like switch up my headphones tried to switch over to my phone to take the call and it just like cut out your audio and I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? I'm busy. I'll call him back later. 
but he's always calling me at the worst times. Anyway, yeah. So, well, where, where, what were you just saying? Like, I, you... um, I said that he fired off the gun to on himself, and it ran out of bullets. And I, he was just like, "What the fuck?" And then he hears a noise behind him, and he turns around. Not he either turns around or looks in the rearview mirror, and he sees the uh, uh, U.S. Army. So what he ended up doing was like when he ran out of bullets, he stepped out of the car yeah. and was calling out to the monsters to t- to come kill him. Like, all right, come get me. Dinner's ready. Right. And then he hears a noise behind him, and he turns around, and that's when he sees the U.S. Army. <sighs> and yeah, the the army. It was a whole caravan of like tanks and like transport vehicles. You know, all these soldiers. Many of them have like biohazard suits on um they're carrying flamethrowers and you can see several of them like like incinerating like sacks of like wet of like spider webs yep so like basically they're like they're working their way through the mist and they're exterminating the creatures and like when i remember when i saw this movie in theaters i just like and i saw that part i was just like Oh, oh no! Oh my God, no! Yeah. So the army has been going around rescuing people. Like they rescued the woman that left left to get her kids. Um, they rescued all the other survivors, and then he realizes that he killed his son and the other survivors, and he drops to his knees and screams. A blood curdling scream of despair, and you're just like, oof, oh, oh, the dread, the and dread like, of that ending. I, I also, I thought it was a little funny too, because you, a couple of the soldiers come up to him, like they're gonna help, start helping him, and that's when he starts screaming, and they're like looking at each other and looking in the car, like they're looking at each other, like what the fuck, and you could see one of them look in the car, and it, that's when like everything cuts out i'm just like oh no god no oh you poor you poor motherfucker (laughs) oh god so but yeah that's pretty much how that's the ending of the of a movie and i read i read an article about uh the movie and it turns out stephen king actually liked the ending of this movie because like he uh he deliberately left the ending of of the miss open ended uh just because I, he knew his book his movie was going to be his book was going to be adapted into a movie so he wanted to leave like some space for uh for whoever adapts it you know to take some creative uh free to have the creative freedom to you know just do whatever they want yeah and he he actually liked it um but other than that this is like definitely it was definitely a good <laughs> it was a good movie and it was a good book um the mist was also recently adapted into a uh tv show on netflix um i'm pretty yeah. sure i think it got i think it got canceled as is uh typical of a netflix show uh let me see let me double check it got yeah, it got one season, ten episodes, and did it get canceled? Yeah, I, Spike canceled it, so it was a it was a Spike a Spike show. Okay. Spike TV, yeah, they canceled after one season. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, that happens a lot, and that happens a lot if it's on Netflix and shit, and uh. The thing about the yeah, the thing about that TV show is that I didn't think it was particularly good. Um, like for starters, they tried to give it a more modern uh, setting. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's still in a small town, but like the setting takes place in like three different uh, places, like you know, and like completely different characters. Um, so like survive their survivors in a mall 
Uh, I believe there was one, like, a bunch of survivors holed up in a, like, police station, and uh, one is at school, I think. And, like, the main character is, like, a father trying to get to his wife and daughter. Um, uh, the problem is, is that, like, you know, like, I just didn't really enjoy any of the character dynamics. Um, like, for starters, like the the daughter is getting bullied in school, mainly because like there are rumors uh, circulating about her mother because like her mother apparently was known to be very um, quote unquote easy back in her day, oh. and um, so like being a small town, she has a bad reputation, even though like she herself has like lives a completely different life now she's a teacher and then of course like she gets shit because she's the um i guess she's like their health teacher or their sex education teacher or something and like she deals with like a lot of controversy behind that because people don't want her teaching their kids about sex or shit like that but she always fires back like i'm just teaching them what they need to know about their bodies all right, they like everything they they learn about sex. They probably learned it from porn. And she even pointed out to this one mother who confronted her about like her class. She's like, "Well, your son is, well, your son. You shouldn't be worried about your son learning about different sex positions for me, considering he's watched. He's always watching porn in my classroom. Oh, like calls him out. Um, but yeah, like it was just like that." weird small town dynamic and i didn't really care for it much um when the when the mist finally rolls in um and people start dying the thing about the mist is that it doesn't ha it, it, there's no like creatures in the mist uh so what the mist does is that it basically it preys on your worst fears and your guilts and everything like that and it makes your guilt and your fear become a reality. Mm -hmm. So the monsters and creatures that you see aren't actually creatures from another dimension, but from your worst fears and nightmares. Uh -huh. So like there was one, I mean, this scene was pretty cool. Um, there was one scene where there was this biker dude who had this tattoo, a butterfly on his back. Um, I guess he had guilt or something sent, and it it was somehow associated with that tattoo. So when he, so when the mist kills him, the wings on the tattoo actually come to life and tear themselves out of his back. So and the thing is though, when they do that, it's like actually ripping from his skin, so it kills him. But like you get this scene of like. You know, as he's dying, the wings are spreading from his back, and it was pretty cool. Like, if you look it up, like, the Mist uh, TV show, just look up, like, images or scenes from that, like, you'll probably see, like, you'll probably see it. Oh, and also, uh, that woman that was, uh, that confronted the mom about her teaching their kids about sex and shit, the uh, thing is, is that she's like she herself is known to be a, like a terrible gossip and she spreads a lot of rumors when the mist kills her it kills her by ripping her jaw off of her face oh god so like so like yeah the final scene with her you see her like running up to the window and like she's missing her jaw and the mist like like yanks her back into the into like you know out of sight and but yeah, that is like I don't I didn't particularly enjoy the mist the TV show that much. Mm -hmm. Not I'm not surprised they canceled it. Um, at the end, uh, I will I will say this about the ending. Um, it was hinted that uh the government was like just like in the movie the the book and the other in the movie, it was hinted that the mist was created was cause this whole thing was caused by the by the military through the arrowhead project but instead of it being an accident it it was hinted that it was done on purpose just to see what would happen 
Yeah. And the military, it looked like, it, it was almost as if the military was in complete control. So, like, the mist itself was contained within a small area. And they were, and they were monitor, monitoring it and, like, making sure it does its job. Mm-hmm. So, but it end uh it ends before the the show the the season ended before uh we can actually see like before they actually explain or uh show what exactly goes on with the military or what they're doing and since the show was canceled we are never going to see what they had planned for it yeah yeah but yeah that was the mist. Uh, you know, you know, you guys know me. I enjoy my creature features, and I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the book and the movie. And I, I liked watching the the movie was real good. The ending still fucks people up to this day. Yeah, that. Ugh. Yeah, that ending. <laughs> the the end of the just the dread. The dread of it all. <laughs> it's a no. It's a. It's a, oh god. It's a no. Just from, it, it, yeah. The survivor's guilt is real. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that guy. I'm pretty sure David would have gone insane. Oh, I'm sure. Lost his damn mind. But that, well, either way, that is it for the mist. Now, next week, hmm, what Stephen King novel do I want to traumatize our listeners with next week? Bye. Bye.